Hi everyone, it's Michael Citron with the Parkwood Pad Real Estate Team at Remax. Coming to you Facebook Live, it's Ask Michael Monday. We had a tremendous uh, amount of people that responded to our, our post and we got a lot of questions, so I, I picked the best of the eight that we had. We got a lot of emails, so we'll do this every Monday, Ask Michael Monday, hashtag Ask Michael Monday, so you can certainly post. If you have any other questions, you can post it in this comment right here below and we'll, we'll try to get your question answered. Our first question came from a uh, past client of ours, uh, Rodrigo Arbenowitz. He had asked Michael, please let me know the best time of year to list a house for sale. So uh, to realize the best value. So Rodrigo, thank you for the, for the question. The best time of the market is, it really depends. In certain areas out in the east, they have a seasonal market, the snowbirds come in. I would say out in west, Broward, we have a market um, during the spring summer season. That's when the most buyer activity comes in. But with that going on, we see a lot of activity with a lot of listings. So if you're listing your house at that time, there's going to be a lot of competition. So right now, the market is, there's very low inventory. So you actually might be able to get better, you know, more money for your home at a time when there's less competing properties. So right now, if your house is on the market, market starts to slow down, but serious buyers are in the market. So a November market might be better than a January or June for your house. So it really all depends on where your house is located. If you certainly have a question like that that you're dealing with and debating about when the best time of year to sell, please give us a call. We love to look at your house individually and where it's located and give you some of that information so you're informed of when you should have your house ready. If it's spring, if it's summer, if it's fall, if it's even you know, in the new year, we can certainly advise you on that. So great question. Second question, hey Michael, what's going on with the lack of single family inventory? Is there anything on the horizon that might prompt more owners to become sellers? This is from Paul Allers. Thanks a lot, Paul, Sun Sentinel writer. And Congratulations on your new job. So I would uh, definitely think it's a great question. So there is a lack of single family inventory, especially good inventory, priced well in the certain price points from the 300s to maybe 500 rates. Those homes are moving you know, in days, not even in, in weeks right now, even in this market right now. So I would tell you, um, in order for a market to change, we have to have some something unexpectedly happen. Maybe we see, you know, something like a storm, like a hurricane, or an economic, you know, crisis, or something happening individually in that actual market. So, say in Heron Bay, there's a huge assessment, or something, you know, uh, oil spill, something of that nature to cause a dramatic change in market availability or in desirability. Somebody is not wanting to move into that community for certain reasons. So we see people say the Heron Bay's Carl Springs section has a stigma because it's in this Carl Springs section. Maybe they'll rezone schools in the future. These are things we get. So maybe a seller might be more prone to sell a house when certain things of a buyer's desire to move in that community might change. So great question. Uh, third question uh, coming from uh, Chris Moncada. Uh, Past client of ours asked a great question. Hi, Michael. Parkland real estate trends from 2016 to 2017 indicates a decrease of sales of 2%, 10,500. However, I continue to see new developments in communities such as Miralago and Watercrest. What does this mean for a seller looking at a three to five year plan on putting the house on the market? Do you think this trend will continue at the same pace, will improve or get worse? Looking forward to your comment. Great question, Chris. I, I appreciate that question. Um, I do see the market trends of homes decreasing. We've done this on our market values just from you know, September from this year to last year and August uh, year over year. So the market has slowed down. We have seen prices starting to level in our city because they went up so high. So I do see that trend continuing, but in Watercrest, Miro Lago, you know, new communities in Parkland Bay, Parkland Golf and Country Club, the newer homes are seeing more desirable, they're more turnkey features. So if you're you know, getting your house maybe prepared for the three to five year plan that you might resell it, I would advise you to contact me. I would love to give you some more advice on this to help you improve your house, to keep it up to date. Do the things that are necessary when your home is ready in that three to five year period to make it as best and compete, you know, best competition for the homes that are going to be still new in Miralago and Watercrest, but you will have a better chance. You will do the things to keep the house in its best condition as possible. Every person living in a home, I don't care if your plan is to sell it in three to five years like Chris or 10 years. 
Keep your house in condition. Do the things necessary. They might not be the most costly things to do. Landscaping, painting, maybe updating little things here and there throughout the house. Keeping your AC units, checking your roof, getting a maintenance ship. When your home's ready to sell, you're going to have that competition in Watercrest, Miralago, you know, Park on Bay eventually. Those communities will compete because they're turnkey. And we have younger buyers that are looking for those upgrades. So they will love your house and this, you know, your Park on Isles home, and we'll be able to sell it for you, hopefully. But I want to make sure that the home competes as much as possible with the newer ones. And by keeping your house in the, in the best condition possible, we'll get you the best price. So thank you, Chris, for that question. Uh, question four, are you seeing more cash buyers recently? And if so, how does a finance buyer compete? And this is from uh, uh, Christina Palapoli and Joe Palapoli. Thank you so much for your question. Uh, coming from a lender, it's a great question. Um, we do see uh, you know, a good amount of cash buyers in our city. It's a very desirable city, an affluent city. People have money. Um, I would say it's probably about 10% of the market, maybe 10 to 15%. Um, of uh, what's buying today in Parkland at the sales. Um, so if you are a buyer with a mortgage competing against the cash buy, you certainly want to put your best foot forward, you know, putting the best offer together, getting your pre-approval letter, maybe even a, a direct underwriter approval, a DU approval, we call it, really presenting it so you can show a potential seller and their agent that your offer really speaks loudly and it's presented well by your agent. I recommend you also put together a letter introducing yourself, putting your offer where it's personalized. I think that will also take it away from maybe a cash offer that might not be full price or, or, or the best offer because cash buyers seem to think they can get a deal because they are paying cash. But a seller is still netting the same amount of money, it's still money, no matter if it's cash or through a mortgage. They're getting the same amount. So in this market, if you you know, if I'm listing the house and I get a cash offer that's the same as a mortgage offer, certainly the cash is king, they call it, because a, a cash deal doesn't have to go through the financing process. So if you do have a cash offer, um, you know, as a seller, it's always the best offer if they are paying the top value. But I have a lot of times where, where you know, Chris has a great question, if the property offer is, you know, a finance offer is a better offer and the cash buyer is not willing to come up, and they're approved, they have, they have all their ducks in a row, spoke to the lender, pre, you know, pre-walled by the lender, and made sure the lender had all the information they needed to do the mortgage. I sometimes push the seller to go with that offer because it's the better offer for them. The buyer's more serious, they're committed to the house, they're personally attached. So these are some, you know, you know, some, some great questions we're having, and you know, that, that's a really good one there. Thank you so much, Chris. Question five. Michael, just out of curiosity, how does the new construction that is occurring all over Parkland right now, affecting the home, value, home values on resales in Heron Bay and Parkland Golf. This is from Dave Kramer. Thank you so much, Dave. Dave lives in Heron Bay. Great question. It is affecting the values. Uh, last summer, for instance, there was a lot of spec homes that the builders had, Miralago and Watercrest, that were competing against um, the, the resales in Heron Bay. So much so that I even had a particular owner that took their house off the market because there was five competing homes against his just in Miralago. We took it off for a year. I was able to sell it for more money a year later and got him a better deal. So sometimes you have to really look at what community you're living in because the new construction is what everybody's talking about. It's the new kid on the block. It's the wedge. It's what people are getting excited about. And these builders are offering tremendous incentives, uh, incentives to buy. Um, you know, special closing cost incentives, um, you know, d special deals and putting pools in now. And we, we see a lot of that going on. So if you do have a house in Heron Bay or Park on Isles where I live, as I answered Chris Moncada's question earlier, you've got to keep your house in the best condition. You've got to make it look the best. you got to maybe paint your cabinets white because that's the new trend or maybe change your countertops or do some work on your home to make it more saleable when that time comes when you are going to compete against the home in the wedge of the new construction. So great, great question, Dave. Um, six, what are your thoughts on weather events? Hurricane Irma and the effects on home demand and pricing in Northwest Broward. This came from Michael Udine. Thank you so much, Michael, for that question. Great title attorney. We work with Michael. I, I definitely uh, appreciate that question. So the, the Hurricane Irma, it, you know, it's the F word in real estate when you have a hurricane. Um, we, you know, we totally dodged the bullet with Hurricane Irma. I was in business when we had Hurricane Wilma. Um, you know, we were lucky the business slowed down, you know, two to three weeks. 
Um, we just did our market trends and so, saw that we had 30 sales, 31 sales, I believe, um, where the month before we had 60 sales. So it affected our market just by having that little scare, that little little storm uh, you know, that we had. But look at people in Naples and in the Keys. Those people are dramatically affected. That real estate market, if you're a real estate agent out there, I'm sure you're, you're negatively impacted. And the market is probably going down in value in there tremendously in this time frame during this storm period. FEMA's still there. People are putting insurance claims there more so. We have them here. I see uh, tarps going on roofs in Park and Isles and in Heron Bay right now. So it's happening even in our community, and we had nowhere near the same amount of storms uh, you know, uh, you know the, the 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 storms did not hit us at that pace that it did, in, in, you know, on the west coast and in the Keys. So I would say that you know certain things like hurricanes or economic crises, those can certainly affect value. So we definitely dodged the bullet. Some people we got called that are scared; they don't want to deal with hurricanes anymore. They want to sell their house. If you're that type of person, you certainly uh, you know give us a call. It might be time for you to pull the plug and and, and cash out on your equity. I would also recommend that during this time, you get your house inspected. Your roof got, you know, really, we still had a lot of storm, you know, uh, winds, so you want to have it looked at. Because if you do list your house next year, all of a sudden you get a storm that we get a, a bad, you know, a weather coming in, a bad rainstorm that we've had in the last couple weeks, your, your roof might open up just from that wind that we had. So I see that happening in neighbors in our community. So. Give us a call. I'd love to recommend an inspector to come out and give a, give a look at us. Your home is your number one financial asset. Take care of it. We had a hurricane come through. We were so lucky that that didn't hit our, our area where it was supposed to come right through us. So be blessed and lucky. Take care of your asset because when it comes time to sell it, I hope we're the ones that help sell it for you, but certainly anybody who's going to sell it is going to have a better chance if the home is in better condition. It's going to compete against homes in the surrounding communities you live in as well as the new construction or areas that are more, maybe a little bit more turnkey desirable for buyers right now. So great question, Michael. I think home demand and pricing, we still have a strong demand, as I did our video on Parkland uh, for the month of September, we still show that it's still in a market where it's a healthy market. I wouldn't call it just a buyer's market or a seller's market, we're getting closer to that even point. So in certain sections, at certain price points, it's, it's a different demand. So like the million dollar price point in Parker, there's a six to nine month inventory. So it's a, certainly a seller's market more so than a buyer's. So if you have an individual question of what kind of market it is, it's really specific to your area. So please give us a call. I'd love to give you the information on your particular area and your particular community. That'll be a, 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 an indicator if it's a seller or buyer market. So great question. I get another one, uh, uh, Katie Solway on number seven. Uh, she lives in Coral Springs. We sold her a beautiful house. She's asking, when is just the best time to sell for her? I would say her home value is particularly in, um, in, in West Coral Springs. The market is, is definitely gone up and her price point, we're getting in that 500 plus price point. So I would say people are getting you know, certain mortgages right now. The interest rates are low still, and you're in an area where people want to do a conventional mortgage. So that's 424. You know, 425 or less is a conventional mortgage, or if you go over that, it's a jumbo mortgage. So the higher prices go up, the more money people have to pay from the difference of 424 on their loan to 500, 600, 700. So as properties tick up in value, unless they have the cash to put down, they're going to do a jumbo mortgage, which is, you know, more, it's a, you know, a more challenging loan. The interest rates might be a little higher. The, you know, the, the affordability on that loan is a little different than the conventional is what people say is the, the strongest part of the market. That's why the price points in the two, three, four hundred price point range are selling so much better because they're in the conventional loan part where people don't have to come down with so much money uh, out of their pockets to purchase. So great question, um, and I think you should sell your house. It's, it's, if you're ready to move and you have the right location and you pick that, it's definitely a good time to sell. Um, question eight from Eric Wilmer, another former client friend. Mike, based on the current mortgage rates in homes still at affordable prices, is there any chance that if and when mortgage rates increase that I could lose money pending a market collapse? What are your thoughts? I always say this to people, we are at a time where I think the market is definitely at one of its highest points and interest rates are still very low, still around 4%.
So if you think that you could get a good deal or you're ready to move, it's a really good time to think about it because you're gonna sell your house for a premium, especially in those price points that are in that conventional mortgage range, and go to another property. And if you're gonna live there for more than three to five years, I'm telling our clients, you're getting a great mortgage interest rate, and over time, you will benefit. So if interest rates go up, say 6%, I don't know, maybe they'll go up to five, five and a half in the next year or two. That will dramatically impact people's um, air, you know, ability to finance a property. The more the interest rate is, the more payments, uh, you know, the qualifications will be different, you will be able to buy less of a home. So it's definitely something you wanna start looking at if you're serious. We also got a question for a couple sellers. So a couple sellers have asked us the process of, so thank you, Eric, I appreciate that question. So another, another question that we've gotten from multiple sellers, I just kind of put this out as the last question. The process, people are nervous about selling their house and buying. Where are they gonna to move to? I, why should I put my house on the market before I find the house I'm moving to? I'm scared, I, I, how can I do that, Michael? It, it, you know, common sense would tell you, that's a, why would I sell when I don't even know where I'm going? And I would tell you, it's, it's, it's challenging, but you gotta trust the process. I probably told this to many clients of ours in the last year or two, you gotta trust the process. You have to put your house on the market. If the option is that you don't need to sell your house to finance your next property, or say you have cash, you don't need to, we go out, we find you the next house, we get it under contract, then we you know, pass maybe the inspection period of the process, maybe appraisal, then you put the house on the market. Because obviously you don't want to carry two homes um, you know, close together like that. If you have that ability to do that, oh, you're an A-paper buyer, you're, you're a gem. We want to we be able to do that for you. But most people don't have that ability. Most people want to get their proceeds, they want to get it off, maybe they can't qualify, the debt to ratio incomes of holding two houses. It's typical that buyers, uh, sellers first need to sell before they buy. So again, it's trusting the process, it's trusting the local realtor that really knows how to give you the best advice in getting your home prepared for sold, you know, to be on the market, and then getting it under contract, and then coordinating while it's under contract to get you another property to move to. Because most likely people don't want to go to rentals. Some do, they can rent and they can buy, and then they're you know, back to being able to be great buyers. But if you want to transition from one house and not moving twice to get to your next dream home, you definitely have to have the house ready to sell and working with an agent that really can take advantage of your situation and help you and really get you the best price and also work with another realtor who has another listing of a home that you want to move to and do that. You know, this year we've done many of these deals. In particular, I did one in Park on Isles where the seller was very uncomfortable with selling their house. We were able to get them on the market. It's got a great price. I showed him houses. We coordinated with our team. So as soon as his home went under contract, we had an offer on another property that he was looking at. And as soon as, you know, it was a contingency sale, but we negotiated a great price for that, for that client. We closed on his house. The next day he was able to get, you know, the other property. It, it worked out, per, you know, perfectly. So it's, it's really important. I want you to, to, to really, uh, this video to emphasize that if you're looking to move, most people want to sell, they have to go somewhere. Either they're going out of state, out of the area, or they're moving locally. Maybe they're upsizing or downsizing. It's so important to work with an agent and a team that's got you covered, that really knows how to get your house prepared, get it under contract, and then be able to find you the ideal home you're looking for so you don't have that butterfly in your stomach feeling. I see it every day, you know, and it's great to calm our clients down and tell them, I got this. This is what we're going to do. I'm not going to force to sell your house. We've got to get it on the market first because just like if you're a seller, do you want to sell your house to somebody who's got to do sell their house first? So we really need to position it correctly so we get the right buyer that doesn't have a lot of contingencies, that's ready to move in so that they can then move into your property and you can still get a great deal on a home that you're moving to. So it's really important to work with an agent that you know, the trust, that has the experience, that's done this over and over again that can get you the price that you need for your house and get you an amazing property that you want to move to. So remember that, that's a great question. I deal with it every day. It's the, one of the hardest challenging questions to answer when clients are looking to sell. Where are they going to? Maybe they lived in their house for 20 or 30 years. They don't want to be pushed, but I'm not pushing you. Just gotta get your house on the market, get it under contract, 
get and maybe get your post occupancy after the sale so that we can get you to the next place. There's a lot of options. And I think if you're hiring an agent that's part time, they've done dealt with this maybe never in their career, or maybe once. I've dealt with it weekly, monthly, yearly. And every year we have the right people to help you through this process. Great team members that deal with this stress-like situation and calm your nerves and make you believe in trusting our process of working with the Citron Real Estate Group. So I want to thank you for our first hashtag Ask Michael Monday. Please, if you have any other questions, please answer them. I would love to help you. And you know, think of us for all of your real estate needs. We'd love to earn your business and trust. We're not just here making a sale. We want to earn your business, the relationship. And I want to check uh, next you got a question. Camera. What's the question? Uh, from Benjamin Silver, will an in-ground generator add value to the market price of a single family home? It's a great question, Ben. Uh, I would agree with you that yes, it would be a value, especially at this time where people are still in that hurricane phase. I mean, we just sold a house in Tall Pines, for example, Ben, and uh, you know the, the, the buyer, had, the owner had an um, original roof and had no hurricane shutters. So just an example of that, if, if the house would have had a generator, it would have had you know, impact windows, those things certainly would, would make a buyer feel more comfortable. So if you have it, people love it. When I have generators in homes, and you know, especially one that you're looking to put in possibly, I'd love to see it. You know, invite me over if you do put it in, I'd, I'd like to take a look at it. They're definitely desirable. And having those type of quick flip switch generators Buyers love that, especially with this whole thing that's going on. And we're still in hurricane season, by the way. Um, people are still looking at that. They still have hurricane on the mind. Um, so that's a great question. I would look at the price cost for it. You might not get dollar for dollar back, but comfortability and maybe your house competing in Parkland Dock versus, you know, there's a lot of listings right now in the market. If you did have to sell or when you do sell, that will definitely stand out because many owners do not have those in, in, in ground generators right now. So great question, and I would tell you to definitely put it in if it's affordable and make sure your home and, and your family feel more, feel more comfortable. That would be something certainly as used as a marketing um, avenue for uh, when and if you do sell your house. So again, thank you for the questions. If you have any others, please always send us a Facebook you know, uh, instant message. Text me at 954-609-0591. If you want to know your value, go to myparklandhomevalue.com. Please, just let us have the ability of earning your trust in business. Even if you don't list yourself for three to five years as some of our clients, we just want to answer your questions and be that go-to agent in Parkland or the surrounding areas um, to help you with all of your real estate needs. We have great access to great contractors, painters, inspectors, you name it. We want to help you through this process when and if you're ready to sell or buy and be able to help protect your number one financial asset, your home. Thank you so much. Have a great evening.